it's a boss glasses moment. So, uh, not everybody is unique in their little world with the little plus signs, and you click and do the auto inserts. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Don't worry. It's totally not amazing. All right, cool. So what we have is trajectory based. So you can see it's figuring out the height of the element that's active and then contextually placing the item there for selection, right? So if I'm at the bottom of the image, then it infers that that's what I want to add it to. And it's a, you know, 50% type of a waypoint at any element anywhere. So it works in grids too, because obviously. So then if I want to add below it, I can just click and add below it. If I want to add above this grid element, add above it. If I have a column that has nothing in it, we have a special mode for that. And now that's filled. So I can fill out this whole board with little, you know, place settings that I can fill in at a later point in time, which is the precursor, of course, to just doing contextual operation of inserting whatever you want at that point in time. However, unlike certain other things who will not be named, this is a text first system. The web and the internet are for self-expression, not for your little adorable block constructs. Anyway, let's figure out what the hell this is and how that type of a system works. So the way I've got this rigged up is with a mouse move event. So the mouse move event is bound on the body itself, right? If we have the hacks body element that's wrapping the entire thing in question. So move me over there. Uh, so <clears throat> looking through as we go, if we're editing and our store, which is now mob X driven, holla, if we are activated and we're ready to go, then we're going to run through and we've got this clear timeout on a mouse timer so that we don't, you know, get crazy event flooding. But uh, you can see every 600 milliseconds that there is not a mouse move event activated, which would be why you have velocity of move here, wait, thing, right? Thing, thing. Now, if I just like sit here and keep doing this over and over, no, 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 see, that's how we're able to achieve that. So. Uh, what I do is I say, make sure that that add button is visible. So it makes the add button visible whenever that happens. And then we use this fun little closest, uh, selector. So closest is going to look at, and in this case it's e.path. So e.path is going to give us the entire tree of events leading to that. So imagine I move the mouse, it knows every single thing, uh, that bubbles up through that. So I want whatever the closest thing is that happens to be editable. So if I'm, you know, hovered over a column or something, I don't want that activating it. Or sorry, not a column, uh, just some random part of some other node. I don't want that to activate it. So if I achieve a target there, that's the easiest, you know, oh God, thank goodness. It's like a paragraph or something. So then what we do is we store that. Then we grab the bounded uh, client rectangle wonderful phrase, but effectively it's going to give you the X, Y coordinates as well as position from the top of the page of that exact element. So you figure the whole box model where that lives. So I can use that to figure out the distance um, from the top. So we take Y page Y, which is uh, distance down the page, and we subtract the distance of the item plus the scroll length down the screen. So we've scrolled down the screen and we know the height of the item. And we're going to subtract where the mouse cursor is from that. Okay. It's a little weird. I know. Then we're going to divide that by the height of the element. What this should give us is some range, right? So if this is the element way down the DOM, the mouse should be somewhere in here based on that first evaluation. And then based on the height, we'll know whether or not we're at the top or bottom of it. That's how we're able to do the velocity base. Hey, you're up here, down here, a ratio basically, it's not velocity. So uh, you can see we've got height, right? So we set height to negative, it's weird, right? Negative add rect dot height. So what is that? Well, we have our add menu that sits in the page. We get the bounded rectangle of that, and we need to know the height of it as well. Now I know it's 22, but this way, if I modify it, it doesn't matter. Or if you scale up the UI, it doesn't matter. So 
We're going to take negative 22 minus 1, just for good measure. And this is going to be our default height. Now, our default height is assuming that we are less than halfway across an element. We've got this wonderful little magic function called position context menu that can take an object in question as far as the menu, position it relative to the active hover in this case, which is whatever the object in the DOM we want to position this next to. And then we're going to take the width and height. So that's your X and Y positioning relative to that, right? So imagine it finds that item and then goes over, down, sort of a, a logic. So we're taking the active rectangle, so the thing that we're about to focus on, half of its width, right? So we're in half. And then we're going to take and subtract the, again, the uh, add button, which might be 11 pixels, and we'll that little bit extra. So we're in the exact middle. Then height, which was calculated above. But distance is telling us whether or not we should position this above or below based on the full height of the object in question. Then it sets this flag of add above. And add above is either true or false here. So we have an event listener on our add menu. So our add menu has a click button or a click event listener set on itself. But it doesn't actually know where it's going to add. That logic was established based on the positioning. So we're going to um, disable uh, mouse. Uh, we have some mouse movement traps elsewhere. Um, if we are adding above and we have a previous element to ourselves, we need to make sure that what is about to get executed is against that and not the item in question. So what it hacks insert, in this case, a P, this could be anything. Like I can make this just insert meme makers if I really want to do. But this is going to say insert at, the, at below this position is effectively the logic that will work out. So if I've got <clears throat> my cursor on this paragraph here, and we're going below that, right? That's inserting, not the previous run. That's inserting, because I said below, that's just going to insert here and then say, hey, stuff this after it. So if I were to go to my GIFs thing, and we do after, we go after, we do before, it's going to move up an element and then insert before that. So you get this effect of insert above. So then inserts the uh, paragraph, hides the context menu. So huge fan, very, very big. I can't believe I got this working. Um, now, how do we do the grids? Because those were those were a lot more confusing. Learn something along the way here. So I, and I wrote a lot of comments. Whenever I write a lot of comments, it's either very late at night, like it is now, because I was definitely only going to work for like five minutes and then three hours evaporated. But, um, or I figured out something ridiculous. I need to write it down for future me because, all right. So what we're going to do is say, okay, so we position that menu. We're through that. That was the easy case. <laughs> um, then we have this case, which is also easy, which is your hover. The event of the mouse is on the button itself. That's going to activate to do the click. If that's the case, we don't want to do anything because otherwise it'll close the menu. So we're not going to close the menu. And then we've got two additional use cases. Now, one of them is, hey, you're somewhere in the body area. Let's just close because I don't know. We don't have anything that you know is to be activated, so we should hide. Um, that could, I'm not positive. Yeah, I was going to say that could be that you've placed the cursor somewhere off screen. right? So if I place it on like this button, oh, it just went away a second ago. There we go. Um, Something like that. So uh, here's the other use uh, context. So this is going to be that I have a column. And is that targeting, right? Because that's not an above or below. Right? There's nothing there. There's nothing to select. This is an actual paragraph tag. This is just an empty space. So unfortunately, we get into some inter deep internals of the way the grid plate tag works. But uh, what we're able to do is say, OK, well, if we land on a column, and uh, that column doesn't have any nodes. Or sorry, we'll skip it. So if we land on something that's a column and three levels up from it exists, and that is a grid plate. I know, a little in the weeds there, specific. So if that's the case, then what we're going to do is we're going to grab that add rect again, height, 
And then we are going to figure out, do you intend to add above the active grid plate or into that column in the grid plate? So the way that we're able to do that detection is uh, if we can't find anything without nodes, which is a special class, there's a class set that says has nodes as a result of all this state cleanup I've been doing. So if there are nodes in one of these columns, and we'll show it here, in the shadow DOM is where I end up being for this element, right? So we can see there's has nodes. This is aware of the slot and what's going on with it. So if I take that item and move it, now column two has nodes. So now I can do positioning here, right? Okay. So because there are no nodes there, I can now do that positioning. So what we're going to do is set our active hover. And this is a weird one. I didn't know this is how this works. So we're going to find the column. Then we're going to go up to column, go up one, go up two is actually the template, the shadow boundary itself. I didn't know you could actually select that when you go up the nodes. Now, if I get up to that shadow boundary, I can't actually go up a level be above that because it's not a real node. <laughs> so I can do dot host and that'll tell me what is hosting this template, which is the grid plate. So set our hover to the grid plate. This allows us to easily find uh, you know, the X and Y. Now, when am I doing this? Well, only if I'm on a column that has no nodes. So if I'm in this column, and I put my mouse right there towards the edge. It's doing some silly positioning here. I'll have to move that part. Um, yeah, I'll have to make it position halfway through. But um, let's see, where is that active rectangle? All right, I'll have to mess with that as to why that's not in position, but um, left to right. So. Um, what we have is calculate the distance, right? And figure out if it should be above or below, just like we normally would before, but they had to do some silliness. Now, here's where it gets crazy. If I'm on something that doesn't have any nodes, all right, we're going to say that it's just add above so that we don't, so we skip a later check. Then we're going to set a slot value based on the column in question. And I'm going to set this globally. I'll show how that actually ends up working. Um, but so we're going to just set, just take hold of this, like, hey, the user has committed an action. That action is taking place in something that needs to have a slot defined or it'll get lost. Because uh, with Shadow DOM, if you say, hey, throw this into, the, into your element and the slot is named incorrectly, it just eats it. Now, it's still there in the light DOM. You just can't see it. It doesn't render. So... I actually am able to use the column names of what you've highlighted to discern what the uh, slot name should be. We can see this with this item. So I'm going to actually move this one back over to that first area. And we should see, hey, there's column one. If I take it and move it, now it's in slot column hyphen two. And when they're not in those columns, we end up with... Uh, it just looks like call one, call two, call three, call four. Okay. So I'm going to take call, replace it with call hyphen. I get a slot name. We're going to store that for later. Then we're going to set active hover to the column that does not have nodes, right? So we did that selection of closest column. In fact, I, it could just be closest column at that point. Um, doesn't even have to not have nodes. Um, so we do closest column. And then parent node, parent node, cool, host, it gets this grid plate, and then the first child. Now, grid plates are required to have a child, even if it's just a single empty paragraph. They have to have one for the logistics of how this rolls. So we're actually setting active hover to that, even though that might not be the thing that has our slot name. It's a little weird. So then we're going to uh, use active rectangle to focus on the column. Okay, so we're going to focus on the column for the positioning, right? And that will allow us to get the height relative to where that column is now height. Is now the height is not really that big a deal because that's going to be 
the same height most likely as the grid plate, but it is possible that they're different, right? So grab the height and then now, because I've calculated active rectangle differently, it's the width of the column as opposed to the width of the entire grid plate. So I'm going to refresh because I actually changed that one line of code there. But so, all right, we're going to add a column, hover over this. I'm going to click and it shows up in slot two. And this will work for any of them. This will work no matter how many times that I split this column, because now we support infinite nested columns in the event that you really wanted to do that. So there's one there, add just to that area, add just to this area. All right, so over top of this, I gotta get the positioning of that a little better, but it is accurate across. Oh, uh, you know, I think I'm doing the, I might be doing the column for the width there. Active rectangle, let's go up and see. That's off of hover. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why it's positioning that a little weird. I'll have to figure that out later. But um, so we're gonna position relative to the closest column. We oh, well, there's your issue. I told it to do it relative to the closest column. Not necessarily the active hover in question. <laughs> yeah, so I did change this previous. Okay, so what we need to do is say um, that this is going to be potentially relative to active hover, except that it's going to be one of the children in that case. So let's we'll just make a new variable for it. Okay, whoops. So we're going to do um, BS menu EL equals, and in this case, it's going to be the column that we hovered over. And in this instance up above, it's actually going to be active hover because it's going to be the host or it's going to be our grid plate, which is what the host is. And then we'll let some more values. Okay. So that should get us the right thing. I wanted to fix that. All right. Add column position correctly. Beautiful. All right, so if I'm above there, we can do this one, insert it in between, insert below. All right, so I teased there was that weird slot thing. So let's figure out how the heck that actually shows up into the correct place when I don't set a slot on an element. So we've got this magic slot value. Moral of the story, positions it correctly now, sets a state in such a way that active hover can be detected later, right? So that active hover is activated by this clicking button. And when we click the button, we insert a paragraph. Sweet. But what happened to slot? So I have a mutation observer that's applied whenever this is connected to the page. So whenever we set up Hacksbody, we run through this for everything. This is how we're able to orchestrate a large content editable area of unknown quantity and apply events and clean up the HTML in a really uh, standard way. So if we look at this, we've got a mutation observer. Okay, assuming we're not in an instance where we ignore mutations, which could be like you hit the undo button, you don't want to monitor mutations, or you're injecting, I have a fake end cap. This is the way you're able to add an item to the bottom of the document. Um, little stuff like that. Um, or you're dragging. I don't want you to be dragging an item in the DOM and that actually influence certain event handlers, right? So when we move this item over here, I don't want that to mess with anything else. So 
when those th situations are not happening, we care about the mutations. So we're going to loop through our mutations, make sure it's a valid element just for, uh, for giggles. And then here's our slot. So this is a fun little hack, if you will. I don't know where that node is, but I know somewhere in some element, something said, hey, I care about slot. Maybe it's that you activated me and you hit the enter key. And when you hit the enter key, a new paragraph's created. Well, what if you created that paragraph in column three? If I just use the browser's traditional content editable, that gets added to the page and then I go, Ooh, it actually shoots over here. I have uh, some repair work built into grid play to make sure that stuff is in a column of some valid name. But it shoots over here if I don't know that you executed that in column three. So we store that temporarily. Then what happens is when the node gets inserted, it's technically over here because it doesn't have a slot or it has column one or whatever. And then what happens is the mutation observer sees that over there, apply, takes the mutation and basically generates another mutation on top of it, taking that slot and adding that attribute in, which forces it over to this location. So that is how we are able to, and then I get rid of you know, the slot. So this is how we're able to set slot no matter where it is, because there's a, something else supplying context that knows what it is that I'm clicking in, knows to set, hey, that's column four, let's hold that for later. And then that way we get it over here. So when the mutation comes back, right, we have this other thing that kicks off insert an element, gets added back into the body in the right place or inside of that grid plate tag. And then some other logic comes along here in the mutation observer to go, hey, we're monitoring mutations in the child list, which is anything below me, and the subtree, which is anything below that. So anything that gets modified, we're gonna generate a change record so we can correctly figure out what slot it needs to go in, apply content editable state so that new paragraphs and you know new images and things like that have the correct tags associated with them. So anyway, um, that's kind of tracing end to end how I made this little in context ad thing. I'm sure I'm gonna have to work with it some more, um, but I, I'm, I'm liking where it is right now obviously or i wouldn't have made a stupid video <laughs> right so um that's all for today if you want to learn more about our projects hit up hacktheweb.org or if you want to talk to us go to bit.ly slash h-a-x-s-l-a-c-k wow i spelled it correctly troll the glasses out <laughs>